Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to a brand new Let's Play for Stellaris! It's been a while since we've done one of these, in fact we didn't even do the Necroids flavor pack when it came out, but don't worry, we're going to be a Necrophage today, but more on that in a bit. Uh, we're also going to be featuring the 3.0 patch, the big free update for Stellaris 3.0. This is the second time, well in a sense really kind of the third time, that Stellaris has gone through a pretty radical transformation. A giant 3.0 patch. Uh, like all the other updates that Paradox has put out for Stellaris, they're named after uh, notable science fiction authors. This time it's Philip K. Dick. So of course this is the, the Dick patch. It's the Dick update. Because Paradox are 12 years old. And thank you very much, speaking of Paradox, for sponsoring this video. Uh, we've also got a brand new DLC, which we're going to be featuring today. It is the Nemesis expansion. Uh, the Nemesis expansion finally embraces what basically happens for most players' games all the time in Stellaris, where we officially become the baddies. We can finally officially actually become the end game crisis. And the two of those things together, but then the, um, the necrophage and the end game crisis, I think is going to give us a really good theme for this game. I'm very excited. Do check out the links down in the doobly-doo uh, for where you can get the Nemesis expansion, as well as I will include a link to the patch notes. They are, I mean, the dick patch, it, it's it's huge, it's big, it's it's very massive and impressive, this patch. Um, in all seriousness, actually, it is a pretty significant one. The game balance is going to be uh, interesting to see how it is. In, in a sense, like, it won't look as dramatic as some of the others, right? Like the ones that um, completely changed how populations and uh, districts and stuff work. Although there's a lot of those changes in this patch as well. Uh, it's not the one that changes, uh, that redid the entire map and transportation for the hyperlane system. Uh, so like, it's one of these that cosmetically, it doesn't look quite as dramatic, but in practice, there's a reason this is a 3.0 change because it is actually pretty dramatic. Let's go ahead and jump in. I have spent all day today, basically, working on a race for this. Uh, I've been doing a lot of research on the Necrophage, because the Necrophage, out of all the origins, might be the one that's the most dramatic. To me, even, in terms of the... the sort of... the sort of kind of, like, min-max and management and, and shenanigans, there you go, shenanigans that you pull off with the Necrophage, might even be more than, say, the cybernetic races and things like that. It's actually really, really impressive uh, what goes on in here. Let's jump in. And take a look at this race, and we'll talk about how the game balance of these things work. Actually, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put down to Origin. So the Origin over here is where we pick the Necrophage. To a certain extent, the theme of my story is also going to be fairly similar to the Remnants over here, right? The Remnants background is... This civilization once spanned the void, controlling much of the galaxy. They were eventually defeated and almost destroyed, but after a long period of destitution, they are returning to the stars. Thematically... This is a lot what we're going to be going with. And in particular, the theme of the Necrophage race, we're going to kind of overwrite, right? The text, the flavor text for Necrophage is, This civilization evolved as a parasite, feeding off other sapient life forms for growth. As it extends its reach across the galaxy, other species will come to be seen either as apprentices to be brought into the fold, or merely as food to sustain its growing might. So I'm going with a slightly different vibe. I got a biography. Guys, I even, I wrote flavor text for our techno-chipped empire over here. Get chipped today! Why live a boring analog life when you can get chipped and enjoy life in high def? Apply visual filters to make your friends look like the hottest rock stars and or internet influencers. Enjoy access to any information at the merest thoughts, or delete memories, unwanted habits, or inconvenient political opinions. Be you, but better, be chipped. I got a typo over here. Now, this uh, this dialog box isn't really designed for multi-line editing. There we go. Get that fixed up. Let's go ahead and save that. It's probably other typos in here, but that was the only one I noticed. So, yes, our race is going to be chip. Now, in terms of appearance, the vibe, the story I've got here, right? Again, going on the, the, sort, of, uh, the sort of relics background with this empire. In my head, previously, in the previous galactic cycle, we were effectively one of these AI endgame crisis kind of things, right? A giant robot species that was trying to take over the entire galaxy and almost, almost succeeded, but was eventually uh, defeated and obliterated. Every single planet purged of its presence, except one planet was missed. A few of our, I don't know, neural chips or something like that, you know, like neuro-organic uh, brain chips kind of thing, survived on some planet somewhere, Petra Prime over here, and uh, the primitives of that planet, or, you know, eventually created a civilization, found some of these chips and integrated them, found this alien technology, and realized that they could be really interesting brain implants to, you know, basically give you, it's to give you 6G in the head. 
And then once they start, once they did that, the brain chips actually took over their bodies. But this time around, our, our chipped empire have learned their lesson, right? The last time they were overt in their conquest. And this time around, they've learned to be as subtle as the bee in the word subtle. Um, and they are really going to go and pretend as much as possible to just be this organic race. Um, and even though we are going to actually deal with quite a few diplomatic malices as we play, there's going to be a few penalties to our diplomacy stuff, but we're going to try as much as possible to make the, uni the universe or the galaxy, if not like us, at least be neutral to us until we reach a certain critical mass, at which point we pull the trigger and we take advantage of the new nemesis expansions, um, features to become the end game crisis so let's go through it our appearance i'm just going to take bog standard sort of human looking person as our appearance again as part of our cover uh species named we're just going to be the chipped that seems okay uh i like the hive mind uh names over here for things um h plus plus for sort of humanity plus plus was the idea i had going on there i might you know maybe we should be the chip plus plus the c plus plus there we go c plus plus update all right Let's talk about what it means to actually be a necrophage. The necrophage race, because we didn't, again, you know, the uh, the necroid species pack dropped a little while ago, but we never did a video for it, so let's talk about it. The necrophages are really interesting in that they they really don't grow on their own. They've got that minus 75% pop growth speed malice, but apparently um, what I was reading is that effectively, if there's any other species on the planet that can grow, the other species will always grow instead of the necrophage race. So our chipped race will never grow on their own is the idea. Uh, on the other hand, they have very long lifespans. They get the plus 80 years. 80 years is about the base for the species by default. So this is effectively doubling the lifespan, which is really handy because it means that all of our leaders will have a huge opportunity to level up a bunch, right? So any leaders who put in, term, in charge of ships or governors or scientists or anything like that will live a long time. So they will be able to reach maximum level. Now, by default, maximum level is level five. What we're going to try to pick some things that will increase the level cap as much as possible so that we can reach higher and higher levels and hopefully live long enough to reach those levels and then reap the benefits for a very long time. One of the interesting things about Necrophage, no matter what your policies, what your politics are, what your civics are, no matter how nice to other species you are, as a Necrophage, only the Necrophage are allowed to be your rulers and leaders. So our chipped population have a complete lockdown on the higher echelons of the of, of the society. Even if you went like fanatic egalitarian, egalitarian, even if you're completely equal, egalitarian. There you go, fanatically. So um, only your necrophage people could actually be rulers and leaders. Um, and they actually, the necrophage race actually have the minus ten percent penalty to worker pops. Uh, so they have 5% bonus to rulers, which is very unusual, 5% uh, bonus to specialists, which there's a few different ways to get that. So you're, all your necrophage people really, will, you'll, you'll want them to be rulers and specialists. You don't want them to be workers. In practice, though, you will actually have few necrophage people. So our chipped people, we actually won't have very many of them. So it's a very unlikely they'll have to ever have to be a worker. In fact, it'll probably be hard to fill the ranks of our specialists with our chipped people, unless we do a lot of necro purging, which we'll talk about a little bit later, um, is an interesting way of converting some people. Because normally that's the way it works. You actually convert. It says consumes pops of other species, but really what you're doing is you're converting pops from another species into the necrophage race. So we're going to be chipping people is effectively the way it works. And that's how we end up with more of our primary species, more of our chipped race, more of our necrophage race. Uh, so they don't, they don't, um, they don't reproduce naturally. Uh, and yeah, only they can be rulers. So getting the 5% boost is nice. They can also work as specialists. They can work as workers, but they're crap at it. Um, so, and they don't grow very much. They do require less food, less mineral upkeep, uh, which is kind of handy. They have no impact on consumer goods stuff, which is actually important to note because rulers and specialists tend to consume the most consumer goods. And one of the things, I'm not going to be running it here, but one of the things that a lot of people seem to like with the necrophage, because it seems quite strong, is conservationist is quite good on your primary necrophage race, because they're only ever going to be, there's not going to be that many of them. So maybe they don't add up to that much, but the positions they're going to be in are always pretty expensive on consumer goods. So it's quite, it's quite nice to have conservationist, whereas your other species, you could make them, um, uh, you could make them uh, slaves and things like that, where they don't need as many consumer goods. So that, that could be a high value one. In terms of our actual picks, we're going to be a little bit cheesy here in that we're going to take slow breeders. 
which is basically a freebie because our necrophage species don't really breed at all. So slow breeders is two points for free with basically no penalty. The rest of it is all here to try to maximize what they are going to do. Charismatic gives us 20% more amenities from jobs. Traditional gives us 10% more in, in unity from jobs. Our rulers will be generally in jobs that generate amenities and unity. Uh, they're in their specialist positions. They've got some jobs that are available there. I mean, it's not going to apply so much if they're just working as a scientist or something like that, but this should actually be very handy. I don't normally pick charismatic. I haven't really done it in the past, but I've been looking into it and it looks like it's actually quite potent because higher amenities will generate higher stability and high stability generates um, much better output from all your population on the planets. It's also going to be really helpful for some of the conquests that we're going to be doing. Uh, one of the interesting things with the Necrophage Origin pick, so normally when you create a game of Stellaris, uh, one of the sliders you can set is how many guaranteed habitable worlds are nearby. Those are worlds, so let's say, so let's say we're a Tundra world over here, right? Um, this means that within, I think within two jumps of our starting planet, there's guaranteed to be by default two other tundra worlds that we can inhabit. Well, as a necrophage, they are going to have um, primitive nations instead, which actually I think kind of fits our vibe very much. Um, and means we can, rather than colonize the planets, we have, we'll probably conquer them. Uh, and that can lead to a lot of instability and therefore lots of crime and things like that. So by having these boosts to our um, amenity production, it can really help offset that originally, which is nice. And then, yeah, we'll be theoretically putting our necrophages in jobs with lots of unity production. So tra traditional should help as well. Quick learners, I was, I'm kind of torn between quick learners and talented. I always tend to pick these, or I often tend to pick these with uh, any empire I play. I really like um, optimizing for high level leaders. Um, and so A, you need to increase the level cap, right? The default is five. So if you can increase the level cap, that's one thing. And then B is how do you get to that level cap? Well, either you live really long or you gain extra experience or maybe both, which is the case here. We could live an extra 80 years as a necrophage. I'm gonna pick quick learners over here. Um, I'm gonna be starting with Philosopher Kings as a government civic pick or yeah, civic or ethic, yeah, if civic, uh, which gives plus two cap. So we're gonna get that. Later on, we might be able to do some gene editing and throw in talented or something like that as well. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but I was kind of worried that maybe we wouldn't be hitting the cap as is if I take Philosopher Kings. So I figured Quick Learner might be better than Talented if I'm picking that. So we've got a long lived species here that should get to fairly high levels of experience. And the only people that can be leaders are always ever going to be the chip. So that's going to be fairly optimal over there, which I quite like. Then as a necrophage, you start with your pre-patent species, pre-patent species. I don't know what exactly it's pronounced or even what it means. These are the people who have not yet been necrophaged or in our case, they have not yet been chipped. Um, in theory, what I would have liked is if our, um, our chipped species looked like a machine species because that might kind of fit. The problem is if you click on this, you, you're no longer biological, so it invalidates some of your picks. So it's it's a little weird and a little bit different. Um, there's also the necroid uh, photos, but they didn't, they didn't feel right. I like the idea that we mostly just look human. We just happen to have a chip behind our ear that's controlling us. Um, you can't, as the uh, the necroids, you can't actually pick the uh, the same species photo twice. So I just picked the Vulcan one over here. I'll only notice our primary photo over here is still just of our chipped species, so that's going to be fine. Um, so these are just going to be known as the unchipped. So we have the unchipped and the chipped. I thought about like, oh, are they actually humans and things? And for a while I was running with the species name being like humans plus plus and stuff. I'm like, no, you know what? I just like the, the chipped and the unchipped over here. Um, the name list, I don't think will matter. Well, it might. If somehow someone conquers one of our planets, they will gain access to our unchipped and we'll be able to make them into leaders and stuff. And then all of a sudden their, their names might actually matter. But in our Let's Play, in our empire, we actually should never see these names at all because they can't be leaders. Okay, so here's where we're going to get or a little bit more min maxi over here. Oh, I did want to note, one of the crazy things you can do with the necrophage species is pick lithoid. As the lithoids, it gives you an extra trait over here uh, that is a zero cost trait, just like necrophage, it's just built in. Um, and it gives you an extra 50 years of lifespan. It reduces your growth rate by 25%, which doesn't bother you for your necrophage race at all. Um, and and of course, there's there's other normal lithoid things like you eat minerals instead of uh, instead of food. But it can give you really long-lived races, uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, but both your primary species and your pre-patent species will both be lithoids. And thematically, that's not what I was looking for for the story that I was telling over here. But I did want to note it's a really powerful combination: lithoid plus necrophage, sick, sick good. Um, yeah. All right. 
So here's our unchipped race over here. We're giving them rapid breeders because here's the thing. Um, pop growth speed is really, really powerful. It is actually really useful to have in general. Uh, so it's going to be pretty handy, I think, for us to have rapid breeders. We don't necessarily need it. The slow breeders thing is like, it's just a freebie over here for our chipped race. Whether our unchipped need rapid breeders, I don't know. Um, but the others are, are really no-brainers. These guys are... Well, first of all, slow learners is 100% free. These guys will never be leaders, so the 25% decrease in leadership experience doesn't matter. Fleeting, they're never going to be leaders, so the reduced leader lifespan literally doesn't matter. Repugnant could theoretically be a thing, because these guys, they can't be rulers, but they can still be specialists. Um, and theoretically, I think the artist, like the artists or whatever, the entertainer's jobs, I think are specialist jobs, so they could theoretically be it. But it will preferentially give those jobs to our chipped, because they have the bonus to it, and these guys have the malice, so it should be fine. But they're still going to be perfectly fine researchers and things, so theoretically, you know, if we have more specialist jobs than we have chipped people, the chipped people should... Uh, optimize for things that give um, amenities. These guys should optimize for things that don't give amenities. So this should be fairly safe. Um, to me, these are just, you know, <laughs> in my head, these guys are kind of like humans. And they just, have you seen humans? God, we're terrible to be around. Who would want to hang out with humans out of all the species in the entire galaxy? So we're going to go with that. Um, there were a couple of other decent options in here. Um, Unruly, Unruly was actually a pretty decent one to consider for our primary race, right? Increases Empire Sprawl from Pops, but our primary race, we won't have a huge number of them. So Unruly may have been good for that. And Empire Sprawl is not that hard to manage anyway. So instead of Repugnant, we could have taken Unruly over here, which wouldn't be bad. Um, the other thing is in terms of positive picks, Rapid Breeder is pretty good. There's a few others that would be good picks. I mean, some of the tech boosters aren't, aren't too bad because again, um, unless we are going aggressive with Necro Purge, likely we are going to have a lot of specialist jobs filled by unchipped people and as a result um, having intelligent or one of the natural blahs for the science things over here might be a really really good pick um, the other thing that's quite nice is ingenious for extra energy because extra energy early on is pretty valuable uh, industrious just you know because these guys are going to be working could also be very valuable so uh, maybe that would be better than rapid breeders um, extremely adaptive is a bit I, i'm just experimenting with i was doing some reading um in terms of ideas and things like that, that might be fun. Uh, and this might have some real potential here. Uh, the, the one issue is that uh, on planets, you know, on planets we um, we colonize, the unchipped are going to be perfectly comfortable and the chipped might be less so. But I, I think it might be okay. The big thing is we can get so many points for free. I ended up in a situation here where it's like, well, these feel like freebie points, and I can only pick one thing left, and I've got four points. Um, I could pick very strong for three and sort of waste one, but I guess I could cancel, you know, I could drop something else or whatever. Um, otherwise, I, I don't know. Like, you know, maybe may, we could pick Ingenious and drop Repugnant. That wouldn't be so bad. I think that's the other valid one, because Slow Learners and Fleeting is free. We could drop, rep we could pick up Ingenious, ro drop Repugnant, that puts us a zero. But I thought I was going to try this with the Extremely Adaptive, with the 20% habitability. It does become maybe a little obsolete later on, although maybe we can do some genetic ed editing to remove that later on when it's less important. So we'll do that. Um, our home world, oops, go back over here. Uh, of course, we're going to be Petra. I'm going to go Frozen just to mix it up a little bit, uh, even though really it should be a desert place. But with my custom races, I tend to... Um, um, I think I tend to do a lot of continental things and things like that, so mostly I was picking something that a lot of my custom races don't have, so there's a little bit less of a of a conflict over there. I'm going to pick the Necroid City background, just because I haven't seen it before. It's not terribly important, but there we go. Necrophage Origin, of course, we can't change that. All right, let's talk about our government picks over here. So I'm going to go Philosopher King. Um, which you can only take if you're dictatorial or imperial. There's some really good traits if you're democratic or maybe oligarchic, uh, but I like the idea of going Philosopher King for the plus two ruler level cap. It also reduces the chance of uh, getting negative traits with our leaders, which is quite nice because if they get something like Arrested Development, they get like minus 1000% XP gain. So basically they, they just don't level up anymore. And we don't want that given how long our people live. Um, if they were, especially if you went the Lithoid, if you went Lithoid Necrophage, I think Philosopher King is just absolutely freaking required uh, to prevent them from just getting stuck and being shitty all of a sudden. Then after that, there's a lot of really good options to pick. Um, I think Exalted Priesthood, 
has a lot of really interesting potential because it does generate more unity and we've got modifiers that generate more unity for us so exalted priesthood becomes really good in my opinion like we've got sort of a spiritual vibe i don't think it's literally a belief in a, a higher power necessarily so much as the people who are chipped are are worshipped as just being better and all of our population they want to become chipped right they 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 hope to do it because it'll make them better um and you know they go through this process to try to become elevated by being chipped uh so they we've created this whole like myth system around what it is to be chipped when it is you know just being taken over by some ai basically so um the spiritualist spiritualist is handy because the the bonus to unity which is going to stack nicely with our generally we're just going to stack a lot of um a lot of unity generation so i think that's going to be kind of nice but it's not actually required the other thing too is um because materials can make a lot of sense especially well we'll talk about it I, but yeah okay materialist um is always good because of the research speed boost um and it actually does enable some good traits oh like um technocracy right who doesn't love technocracy replaces some of the administrator job with science directors which also produce unity which sounds pretty good so there's a couple of little systems that way uh for that we would have to go materialist the thing is i don't think i want to go robots um for a couple of reasons one you know necrophage is already a lot to deal with and two uh, and so I'm not, you know, not want to add robots management to that as well. But two is that, again, we're trying to stay under the radar. We're trying to really disguise. Like if we start building a bunch of like sentient robots, people might start to raise some eyebrows over there and remember the history. So we're going to try to just avoid that. So we're going to go spiritualist and we're just going to ban robots completely in our empire. So that should keep people fairly happy. Uh, you know, we're emphasizing that, no, of course, we're totally organic. So we just, you know, we've augmented ourselves with this chip, but that doesn't mean anything else, right? Exactly. <clears throat> Memorialist is pretty cool. That's That was added in with, uh, I think, the Necroid pack. Um, the reanimated armies could do some fun things. Re reanimated armies is really tempting because, because we're going to start with two primitives as our habitable, guaranteed habitable world. We're going to want to probably conquer those right away and the rehabited reanimated armies are quite nice because they cost i think only energy instead of minerals so early game it's going to be a lot easier to raise up an army out of that uh and they're like immune to to morale damage they're actually really potent arm like troops um but i think flavor wise it didn't really fit with what we're going for over here so that's why i opted uh to not go that way um barbaric despoilers so if we did pick a uh, militarist we could actually do some pretty crazy stuff with this this gives you the ability to uh get a different bombardment stance which is raiding that lets you kidnap populations which then you could go and and you know uh necro purge them and convert them into more of your primary species uh it, it looks like this is actually quite powerful um but isn't what we're going to go for in this game. It's it's really, really seems quite good, but isn't the vibe that I particularly want. Death Cult's really cool. You can't do it with Necrophage. Uh, it's it's mutually exclusive, but it does look like it's a lot of fun. Distinguished Admir Admirality would be another way to get a plus one level cap just for Admirals, but it would still be pretty good. Uh, Fanatic Purifiers and, and uh, Necrophage is actually an insanely good combo as well. Um what else might be good for us oh meritocracy there's another plus one le leader cap if you're yeah if you were going democratic or oligarchic you'd got meritocracy here but i'm taking uh philosopher king instead so philosopher king plus two level cap meritocracy is only plus one but it does give you the specialist pop output so you get like insane tech rate meritocracy is probably better than philosopher king but i'm gonna be happy with this uh and then there's stuck on technocracy but i'm gonna opt for slaver guild over here because i am going to do slavery with um with like the aliens and stuff that we capture in here um and i think that's going to be quite handy so we get plus 10 percent uh um resource output from our slaves uh we can enslave more pops now here's what i'm wondering if we're gonna have slaves i'm wondering if the unshipped who probably won't be flagged as slaves maybe i should give them more traits compatible with being specialist well the thing is we don't have to have everyone slaved right we can we can choose we can have like different caste systems uh, assigned for things um and speaking of so we've got authoritarian over here which is going to allow stratified economy which might be useful it allows enslaved aliens but so does xenophobe um what else is can't use democratic government forms which is fine because i'm not using that we're throwing the spiritualist just for the unity and for some amount of story flavor and then xenophobe i decided early on we have to be xenophobe because 
we got beaten by all these organics once before. It is our plan. You know, we're trying, we try to be a little subtle with it, but the other, you know, the, the other species will still know that for some reason we don't like them that much. They may not know why, um, but we're definitely going to have the xenophobe in here. Uh, plus the xenophobe enables purge, which is in our case is going to be a necro purge as an option. We're going to have to be very careful how we use it, but necro purge is a forced conversion of a species into the chipped version, into the necrophage version of our species here. Um, and this is just going to give us more options. We'll have to be careful with it because if we want to play semi-diplomatically, and we do, uh, we may have to be a little careful. And then one of the things is if we ha if we capture one of these um, primitive worlds early and then purge them like immediately before we meet m other people or many other people, they won't know that it's happened. And that can be that might be really useful for us. So we might do something like that, like ASAP. I'm not sure. But anyway, that's going to be the setup there. For the voice, we're going to take Necroid. Um, empire name. So we're going to the Techno Chipped Empire. We've got, I think, a very cool flag over here with the green background, split like that, the sort of circuit board, ship appearance. I really like these Imperial ships with the little swirly bits. Very, very, very cool. So I'm going to take that instead of the Necroids or anything else. Um, and yes, our title, male or female, is going to be Prime. Uh, this was just the random name it gave me, Consciousness. I like that. Prime Consciousness, I thought was really cool. And with that, we're ready to go. I can't remember. I fixed a typo. I think I saved, but that's going to be all right. I'm going to hit Done. And this is the start we're going to go with. I'm going to go with a huge galaxy here. Um, the, more things with the 3.0 patch have promised performance improvements. So we're going to really put it to the test with a huge galaxy. Um, I think elliptical is fine. I mean, there's there's a few shapes that are interesting. Elliptical is pretty strong. I think a lot of people think it's it may be the most interesting, most balanced. Um, AI Empire, this was the default at 15. More? Less? I think the default's going to be fine. I turned off the advanced AI starts, and I brought the Fallen Empires from 4 down to 2. I think 4, maybe 5. Maybe it sets it to 4. Uh, I thought, I'll still want some Fallen Empires, but I won't want them to be too much and too involved. Uh, there's one Fallen Empire. I think the spiritual Fallen Empire gets really cranky with us in particular. Something like that. Um, Marauders, I'm going to leave on there. We're going to leave the tech cost normal. I'm going to bring down the Habitable Worlds one notch from a 1x to a 0.75. I actually often like the really low habitability game. It's actually quite fun. Um, it makes finding those habitable worlds really, really special. And it does mean less micromanagement. You know, maybe we'll point 0.5. Okay, this will make the um, some aspects of the game harder in that the empires will be effectively weaker versus things like Marauders and the Endgame Crisis. Um, yeah, you know what? I will I will bring that down a little bit. That's going to be okay. Um... Primitive Civilizations, we're going to leave them at 1x. Uh, crisis Strength, I think this is the default 1.5. Uh, crisis Type, this is new in 3.0. You can choose what Crisis, but we'll leave it on random. I'm going to leave the same dates. Difficulty, Grand Admiral, so this is going to be maximum difficulty, but we're going to put Scaling Difficulty on. So it will slowly ramp the AI up to Grand Admiral over here. So they're not going to start with obscene bonuses from turn one. Uh, so they won't snowball quite as hard. So I think if you play high difficulty, Scaling Difficulty is really nice to have on. Uh, AI Aggressiveness, Empire Placement, that's all normal. Advanced Neighbors are off. Hyper de Lane Density, I brought from a 1x down to a 0.75. Again, I feel like it, it, gives a, it, it gives a really interesting feel to the galaxy. Sometimes I like to go all the way down to 0.75, or to 0.5. We'll do 0.75. I left the Abandoned Gateways at 1x, um, but the Wormhole Pairs I've dropped down considerably. Uh, so it is going to be a lot harder to get around the galaxy until people start popping Dimensional Gateways and or building ones. Uh, guaranteed Habitable Worlds, I'm leaving it a default of 2. And for us, that's going to mean uh, primitives instead of actual habitable worlds, because uh, I'm curious about that. I've turned caravaniers, caravaniers off. Uh, they're, they're interesting, but they don't really do it for me. And some at some point, I sort of get tired of them, you know, popping up and bothering me about things. I should leave them on because there's more. You can do good, strong things with them. But I, for me, I'm just like, I'll just turn them off. Xeno compatibility will leave on. I don't think we're going to use. I think it's mostly multiplayer balance and things like that. Um, but uh, I'll leave on for me. And that's that. I'm going to hit play. We're going to see our start, and then we'll go ahead and put in a cut. This is just episode zero, man. It's all set up, but there's a lot to talk about. The Necrophage race is something else. I mean, I guess I could have just said, okay, here's my race, and then we're going to jump in the game. But I wanted to talk about my picks, my reasoning, my story. So there's a story here, but it really doesn't apply to um, to our story exactly, because it's, it's really the base Necrophage, which are like, you know, little parasites and things like that. We, we work a little bit differently uh, than that. Where are we in the galaxy? 
All right, I was sort of hoping for this because story-wise, I feel like it makes a lot of sense if we're just on the edge of the galaxy. That's one of the reasons that we were we'd been missed, right? During the big purge of the previous the previous species. I don't even know what our you know previous empire name was. It's not important. We're the chipped now. Well, the chipped is really the the organics that have the chip in their head, really, whatever the the robotic race was. But yeah, so a few, just a few of our neural chips were left on this planet, were eventually discovered by these species, and the rest is history, or rather the rest of the galaxy is going to be history once we unleash upon them. But I like that. I'm very excited for this game. I hope you are too. Uh, if you are new to the channel, of course, subscribe, hit the bell, like, comment, lick the screen, do all the things. It really helps the channel a lot. And otherwise, I'm going to see you guys next time. Bye-bye.